Hello, welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. I am down here on a small stream because I'm trying to grab a couple of hours after work, done all the garden jobs, and I've got about two hours on the car park ticket, trying to catch anything at all, but catching a fish using one of these which is a centre pin reel, because quite a few have said, go out, we want to see you catch a fish on a centre pin. Now, it's just another reel, it's just another type of fishing reel that used to be a traditional method of fishing many years ago, and now sort of really only specialists use it, I suppose, or people that enjoy fishing with this reel. I don't fish with them much because they I find them a bit slow to fish with. But I'm going to have a go. I'll go on here, I'll put some five pound line on there. I've got my trusty old Avon float, 3BB, I think it's about a number six there, which I might slide down. It's very low and very clear, so it's going to be tough. The hook is a hook to nylon that I tied up. God, it's small. Looks like 16 long shank blued, which is a very old pattern. Long shank blue, but it's fine. You can use them for casters and things like that because they're very really fine. They don't break the caster up too much. It's going to be no more than about a foot or 15 inches deep here. You can see that just along this, just in a just in a public park area. Thankfully, it's relatively quiet for a weekend. So I'm going to run some maggots through, and I've got, got red maggots left over from a, a bream fishing uh, trip, and some loose feed. All I've got is uh, two milk horse pellets, because at the end of the day, I don't want to overfeed them, and that's if there's anything in there at all. Well, I usually fish up there, there's barely any water, and the rushes are growing in, so it's pretty, I'm quite shocked, actually, to say the least. I'm going to give it a go. Now, you can fish these close in with a stick float, make no mistake of it. Let me move that up for you. The problem being, to get these revolving without feeding them out manually, like this, by doing it by hand, just to have, you need a heavy float and quite fast current, and the current will pull this, and that will revolve it, that will, you know, you can, that's how you fish them and trot them down. But, if you don't have much current, which I'm stuck with now, I'm probably either gonna have to feed the line off, or just gently what we call thumb it, just to let the line trickle out, so that I stay in contact with the float. So let's get baited up with a couple of maggots, throw some loose feed in, and see if we can't catch a roach a day, so just something. Let's get those on the hook. Now the benefit of this fine blued hook, fine wire, it doesn't damage a bait very much, as you can see there. That maggot is wriggling like Billy Ho. Just chuck a few in there. The thing is, it could open up on a bigger fish like a chub, so I don't really need a chub, I need dace, roach, maybe gudge and that type of fish. Just going to throw a few of these in, see them? Just regular pellets, in they go. Just a pinch of maggots, but the idea is to follow up pretty well as soon as you can. Just take that ratchet off. As soon as you can with the float. So you just pull the line like this, make sure it will flick out. You pull a loop of line off and just flick it where you want it, the floats back down there, and then you can see it start to revolve as I... Oh man, I think that was a bite or was at the bottom? Not first time down, surely. That caught me totally. I did a real childish strike then. It's even slid the float a bit. I got the feeling that was a fish, guys. I'm going to I'm gonna move this bait a little bit closer. It's a little pinch of bait. I think that was a bite. Oh, here we go again. So I pulled off like a yard of line between the butt ring here and the bottom of the reel. Mustn't strike so hard because that was... Now I'm going to have to watch this. Now the ratchet's gone. That is a fish. It is indeed. Fish of the day. How about this guys? Do they get any smaller? Not really. That's a minnow. That was what obviously gave me that bite. So if we're going to get minnows all the time and I've only got maggots, I'm going to have to put a bunch of maggots on. But I'm going to go down again. Go a little bit deeper, perhaps cast it a little bit farther back. I'm sure they're going to be all over it if there are minnows indeed in there. Now, listen, if you want to go perch fishing, minnows are the best live bait. You can even use them dead. I just bumped a fish in, I don't think that was a minnow. There's hardly any current here, it's just hanging on the inside there, and that's where I expect to get a rope. So, you just you can feed line out with your finger like this. I'm on the bottom there. It's a slow, deliberate method of fishing this. But you can stay in contact with the float, like any fishing wheel really, and just tease it down. And obviously it's what, what you call it's direct contact. 
So it's one to one. As soon as you wind on the fish, you're, you don't have any skidding drags or anything like that. You have to let the fish fight under tra pressure by putting a, your, your thumb on the uh, rim here. It's so shallow, I can barely get any depth there. Bait's gone, let's change baits. I might be a tad deep there. Right, I've upped it now to three maggots because that might just be enough to feed off or stop those minnows tugging away at it. Here I am going down, running down. A bite can come at any time. The swim has changed so much over the years when I used to fish it many, many years ago. I'm still getting minnows. What I do is I'm going to walk further down. Yeah, I've got minnows here, even on, even on three maggots. There could be minnows all the way today, guys. Now, I'm going to try and bring this here so you can see, I might miss a bite, but you can see the current is pulling the reel. It's just drawing it off under tension so I can stay in contact with it. If I want to stop, I put my thumb on here, just whoa. If I want to stop it, I put my thumb on here and I can just lift and strike and then just wind the fish. If you want to, let's say I'm fishing way down the back there and you want to come in quickly, you do what's called batting. You can just bat it like this, bat it at the bottom and bat in a very hungry minnow that's chomped on three maggots. It's a good job I'm not going perch fishing. He would be on a one-way ticket. If I had a choice, I would use white maggots. Quite like white maggots. This is back end of autumn. Absolutely gorgeous autumn day, I have to say. So here you go again, guys. So here you go again. You're starting basically in this position. You can just swing it out like this and it rests on the bottom. You know, if you're fishing in the mar margins in close, you want to go a bit further. Between the butt ring and here, you pull off some line like this. So you see it's sliding. You swing it out, it gets to the length of the line and then you can start feeding that line out. I mean, I'll, I'll get minnows on this straight away. I'll probably have to move from this swim. It's just not enough current to get to get a good flow going. I'm going to try casting back down. It's another minnow. Well, I tell you what, I've had three fish. I can't grumble at that, can I really? It wasn't minnows I wanted. If the minnows are there, it's going to be trouble getting at anything else. Back you go, chum. I may well walk down by that tree. Pull it out, swing it a little bit further this time. I get the spool going. Now they're on it straight away, the minnows. I need faster water is what I really need. Yes, minnows, minnows, minnows. Now you could fish these somewhere like this and just wind them in slowly and a chub might take them. Or indeed a brown trout, even though um, you know people think you fly fish for them. In season you can catch brown trout, no problem, and even pike. And I get minnows all the way here. There we go. And they are, some of them are small. I don't think I've known this river to produce really small minnows. It's a chalk stream. I'm gonna try and put a mega bunch on. I'm gonna take a bit of longer line out and try and get a little bit further out in that current. What little current there is. I've now got four maggots on the hook. And I still can't get any real... Oh, better... No, that was a minnow again. They're taking... Wait for this. Four maggots. In fact, I think this is barbless. And I think some of them are... Some of them are wriggling off. In we go. I'm not sure I didn't see a bigger fish swirl then. Minnow. They give a very sharp dippy bite and it stays under for a millisecond and generally pops up. They find that 
the minnow can't actually uh, hold the float under. If there's a lot of current going through here, this this would be running along, running along its own own steam there. Well, I've moved down a little bit, I'm just below that bush there, and I've been feeling I've seen a swell just out there. So I'm going to send it down with them. Uh, yeah, there's definitely fish working. Swell there. Okay, here goes the float. Let's see if we can't get one decent fish. Okay, that's a better fish. That's a better fish. There we go, we've got the trees here. Oh, there we go. A dace. Let's turn that round in this lovely autumn sunshine. A nice day, he's taken on the centre pin. And you can see, no problem there with a bunch of maggots. And that's under low water conditions. In fact, that was taken four maggots. So just moving downstream has made the difference. Well, I was just going to move upstream. I was going to go way, way up. And I've seen some uh, some days. So hopefully I can get away from the mirror, minnows. There's a little um, outfall pipe that's coming in there. And it must have made a scouring effect there. I've thrown some in. Uh, probably if I alter this camera angle you might be able to see them but over there where that shadow line is there's a deep pool when I say deep it's just say it's six inches in front of me I'll move that for you it's six inches say here oh my god I've just seen a chub's tail I've just seen it on the edge of the shadow line because the fish don't like coming into the sun so I've fed my bait up here along the edge of that wall too shallow to fish there but I'm hoping the fish will show just where that waterfall bit's coming in there and some fish should pick up there. I've thrown some pellets in, I've thrown some maggots in. I've seen days, I've just seen a chub's tail so I'm going to spike the camera in here and see if I can get one. It's a bit tricky to fish though. For my maggots I've thrown some in there trying to entice them out. It's going to be noisy here. I think the mic I'm right on the main where the main road is but I'm just trying to feed the maggots to bring them into the sunlight a little bit. I'm going to take the camera bag off. Just give a few maggots there. Because I've definitely, definitely seen fish. So I'm just going to wait for these people to go past and I'll get the bait going in. Yeah, there's some chub there. I can see some chub. I've no idea the size. I just see the black of the tail. So let me just get into position because I have not got a lot of space to, to work with here. There's a rack of dace in there. I'm going to have to flick the float under there and try and just feed it back. It's almost, almost impossible to fish. That was a bite. I need to be further over in that dark area. Oh, there's a chub. 100% is a chub down there. It's almost a free lining situation rather than a float. This one should, be, this should evoke a response, as we say. I'm going right through the honey pot now. Sure to pick a fish up there, go right through the middle of them. They're all zooming around, zooming around, zooming around. Is one going to make a mistake? I'm coming out of the hole, it's going to the shallows now, and can you believe it? Nothing's touched it. I'm going to bring the float in, I'm bringing it into the left quietly. I don't want to disturb anything, so I've got a bunch of maggots on here. I don't know if you guys are going to see this, it's so glary beautiful autumn day. Not the best for fishing. And I need to get a little bit further. I don't think I'm going to get it. That's where I've seen on the edge there. And it just drops down about two or three feet behind that. My bait is just trundling along the bottom at the moment. I'm holding it back, holding the float back, so that the maggot actually goes through first. I mean, if I was targeting chub, I would go through a big lobworm or a big piece of bread flake. So bring the float into the left. I don't want to make a lot of disturbance. Let's see if I can get over a bit further. Let's see if I can get up the tree. That was lucky, wasn't it? Got everything. 
That was fortunate. But as they say, you know the saying, fortune favours the brave. I don't think they like a bunch of maggots. But really, there isn't much choice. Because if I put a single on, I might get uh, a minnow. See if I can get over there again, but without going up the tree. That's about right. This dace coming over on the right hand side. Well, quite a lot of people in the park. I lost a, I have a small chub, it might be even a bit of trout, I'm not sure. Couldn't get the camera on in time, another fish I've lost trying to film. But I've seen chub up here, but they're in the shade. My problem being, behind me, I'm in a tree line at the moment, but up there where I saw some fish. Unfortunately, my shadow's going straight across the water and it's late in the afternoon, so they're gonna see me. There are fish up under there, so I'm gonna spike this here get that in there I'm gonna raise it up and I'm just gonna throw some bait in and just see what we can see there hopefully something will come drop back out of the uh, shadow line there Right, I've got a dace on guys, nice big dace. Here we go. I had to move up here trying to get some pace on the current so I can show you more about fishing because it's got a little damper on it for uh, adjusting the speed that the centipede runs at. But look, if you keep calm. Lovely looking dace here. It's getting straight back. At least it's not a minnow. So, I just had one test run down and got a fish straight away. But listen, up here, to adjust this, the, the speed that this goes around on, there's a screw in the centre there. So when we used to do it, we take it off and we put like a fine um, sewing machine oil in there. And there's gently tighten that screw, not too much, but you're adjusting that, okay, for tensioning how loose and tight this can be is here. So if you can just see this, if it goes that way, which I've got it on full out to make it look very light. I can, I can tell you what, I can always... I'm blowing it and it moves. It's on a spring there as well, so you can you can wind that in if you're on a big fast river with a, a lot of current, and that slows it up a good deal. That adjusts the tension, if you like, there, of how much it goes out, how fast it goes, you don't want any overruns or anything like that. So being as this is quite a light float, I've got it pretty well freewheeling. Then on the other side, you've got your ratchet here, which you wouldn't really use at all except if you're still water fishing, say for barb or something like that, ledgering on the bottom, but for float fishing you want it, as per this, free running. So let's see if we can't get one to, uh, to order for you. It's a lot, lot faster here. So basically what it means is the fish have got less, less time to make up their mind. I'm gonna try and have a little run through again there. I don't see any chub. I don't see any bigger fish moving at all, but at least the sun is sort of off my back, but not sending it over the fish. I can't see anywhere else, to be honest, that's sort of worth fishing on this stretch. Now I'll probably get a minnow if I hang in there too much. Yes, that was a minnow. What I've done is try and avoid hooking in your stomach. Try and avoid, if you can, the slacks. Because generally the minnows are in the slightly slower water. The dace are going to be in the faster water. Nothing going through on this time. I know it shallows up back there. I'm pretty gobsmacked as to how much this is growing in. So generally I only fish this during the winter. When it's all died back, there's a lot more water running. I might just try three maggots and see if anybody larger is at home. Here we go again. Just trying to hold it just off that ledge there. 
and let it go down without disturbing the float too much. Fish on. Fish on guys, feels like a dace. Here he comes, here he comes. What do I know? It's a roach. Here we go. On the centre pin, this is probably one of the species that a lot of guys like fishing. I used to do years ago quite a lot of barbel fishing on the float, wading out, and, and that with a centre pin, and that was good. But those times change. There's a nice looking roach here. Hopefully, you can see him in the lovely sunshine. He goes straight back. I think I'm going to just give it half a dozen maggots each time. Seem to have about the right depth there. So you just take a finger line what they call one finger, swing it out and then try and hold it back in that faster current so it stays in the kill zone a bit longer I'll probably only have six or eight trots through here because obviously being a, a, a little short oh it's minnows being a little short swim you don't get much chance it goes through six, eight feet, ten feet. You either get the bite or you don't. And the more times I send the float through here, the more chance it's going to spook the fish. Going to go through double maggots this time. Let's try this one. I don't see any big shapes or anything over there. So Mr. Chubb appears not to be at home today. That's minnows, I've got to tease it out. It's in the main run there, going down, down, down. Oh, it could be minnows moved in on me, it could be minnows. Well, the minnows moved in on me, people, so I'm going to go through the stingers. I don't think there's been anybody up here by the look of it. I'm sure I've, I would have seen it. If I can see everything down on the bottom, there's absolutely no fish here at all. Right, just a hole over here. There's a bit of an overhang there. Of bushes on the far bank. And also the sun is not on that. There is a deeper pool there. But I tell a lie, you can get in there, people coming from the other side. Let's just creep in here. I don't see any fish. I don't see any fish here. Well, we can only try, can't we? choke the weed. There might be one just over in that run so I'm going to throw some bait in before I even fish. The sun's going down now. Fast. A lovely day. I fear it's going to be cold tonight. So you can get over underneath that uh, overhang there you can get some chub sometimes but as I say that's more more in the winter I have never never seen it as narrow and depleted of water as this and this is like a week we got to November so it's pretty shocking all right I've no idea how I'm going to get a float in there. What I'm going to do is just unclip the microphone. Put it on there. Well, I finally found a couple of chub by some rushes. They're just, I've got a feeling I'm going to have to take the float off and maybe free line for them. They're very, very tight. They're in a very tight area. I'll just turn it round and show you. I'm screening myself using this hawthorn bush. You might not see them. They might have spooked already. I so, know oh he's laying there. There is a chub laying down there. I'm just going to ease this out. You might be able to see him. He'll probably spook. Just out from the rushes there. Is, there's in fact there's two chubbies dropping downstream, so I'll see if I can get them to come out with some maggots. 
obviously without getting myself spiked on these hawthorns. Well I've come downstream, no luck with those chub. I've tried it, I just cannot get any flow. It's going through here a little faster than a slow canal, so it's not really best for centre bin fishing, but I'll just show you, if you wanted to cast a little bit farther, you can take what's called two fingers of line. Now, you, you get the spool going like this, you go to the top, you allow a little drop, see where the float is there? So I've got, there's my finger, there's a big loop of line from the butt ring, I let it slide through the rings, and as I come back again, I can let it a bit more revolve off, like this, I've got two loops there. I hope you see this. There's two loops there. And then when I cast, I cast out, I let the top loop, this one go first, followed by the other loop. Just like this. One, two, three. You can see it goes this one first, then this one, and three is on the reel. And you can see I've cast way down there and I can still revolve and trot down. I mean, I can't at the moment, obviously, because there's barely any flow there and I'm getting mullered by the minnows. So we'll just show you that one again. That's batting the reel, like this to bring it in. And yes, indeed, you can see Mr. Minnow is on again. He doesn't care if there's a bunch of maggots or not. On just one of those afternoons where I've obviously mistimed the amount of water that I thought would be in this river and there's not. But at least it gives you a bit of insight into setting pin fishing. So listen, on average, say from here to that wall, I can pull off, leave the float hanging like that, one, one length of the rod. I'm going to do this exactly right there. There's the length of the rod. You can see there's the maggots. That's the length of the rod. So I pinch it here and I let it revolve there. I've got enough to swing to cast out and I can let this go once like that it goes tight it comes off the bottom of the spool and as soon as it's in the water I'm just going to do this it's going to get a minnow in here but you can see as it revolves slowly like this I just feather it lightly I can stop it start it or I can speed it up if I want the float to go through fast I can do that or I can just gently thumb it and slow it up if I want to bring it in I can just wind like this or if I in a fast river and I want to get out quickly I just bat it to bring it in like that so again bring it down so you've got the length of the rod you know to give you a bit of swing pinch a line here let it come back here like that you might be able to see the loop there go back up with the little finger I use come back up again there you've got enough to to swing with there you might be able to see it and you let the first loop go then the second loop follows it if you let them both go together then they'll possibly be tangling Obviously, if that was flowing fast, this would be revolving all the time. And again, don't forget that nut. You can adjust it if you want to slow it up. That makes it, that makes it slow up. I mean, I can't get any pace out of this river at the moment. Here we go again. Now, there is another way of casting. Let's throw that out for you. Like that. Always make sure it comes off the bottom of the spool. Now what the professionals do, they reverse the line and they have it coming from the top of the spool. So the line goes straight through the rings, if you can see this. So if you can imagine that if I, I think I can do this actually, I, I need to wind it all off and then wind it so that I'm re winding the reverse way, you play the fish backwards. So therefore, instead of coming off this side of the spool, which is more of an acute angle, they like to have it coming off the top of the spool here so it goes straight down through that rod ring, which makes a lot of sense. I don't do it enough, it doesn't bother me. But the, I won't call them purists, the minnow enthusiasts like me, it doesn't make any difference at all. Over a long period of time, perhaps it's just a more pleasant way of fishing. Now I'm baiting up with big bunches of maggots in the vain hope the minnows won't take it, but they will. So there is another way of, of casting across the river, which I'm not very good at, but I've seen a guy, I think he was a Trent fisherman, he used to come down 40, 50 years ago on the Hampshire Raven fishing for sea trout. And he would, he would have it like this, he would keep it a little bit shorter there, right, so you could do it slow. As he cast out like that, this hand 
or this thumb would start the spool spinning slowly so that it revolved and it was actually casting with a revolving spool. You might be able to see it if I do it, I just go bang, look, it's running out there. I've got a few more revolutions and I've got possibly a little bit further than I would with two fingers. So that's quite difficult to do. Get the length of the rod and as you accelerate the cast, just get the spool going, not too fast because it will overrun as it's done there. Try it again, just a gentle flick of the spool, just accelerating it. I follow it with my fingers here, so it doesn't go around this side. And then you can start your trot again, running the float down. It is minnow central down there. I think I'm just gonna spend the last five minutes, people, up in that swim that I started on. Oh, he's gone. Plip, I heard him go in there, water. and just see if I can't pick something, a dace or a roach to finish off with, because you can only catch so many minnows and when you're not perch fishing with them for live bait, it's a bit samey. Mind you, must be a time that many a minnow has saved the blank. I'm gonna call it urban fishing for minnows. Right guys, fish on, decent fish this time. Got a good fish on, just going down that swim I tried earlier on. It is, thank goodness, a nice chub. Oh, what? Talk about last cast, this is the last swim. Oh no, I haven't got him yet, he's gone up the tree. He's gone up the tree. He's trying to get to that snag. He's not a very big chub, but I tell you what, I'm so grateful for it. On the centre pin, here he comes, here he comes. So you can, you can play the fish here, you can let it slide on this thumb here like that. He wants to take line like that. Just play the tension on your thumb. You can lock it down tight or you can let it go under pressure. He's trying to get over to that snag. Play him in nice and slow and this is like one to one. You're on it constantly, there's nothing slipping. And there we go. Success hopefully says yes in every packet. A nice little chublet, about a pound and a bit. You can see there, there's a centre pin reel. And Magus just nicked in the top. There are bigger chub down there, so maybe I'll have a few more casts. My ticket, ticket doesn't run out quite yet on the uh, car park. And that's a nice fish. Well, well, well. I only came for a couple of hours just to show you guys, give you a few tips on roughly if you did want to try centre pin fishing. And there you go. Lovely fresh looking fish that one. Now it's getting noisier and noisier as the traffic uh, starts up. This used to be a really, really good little river years ago, but like so many places, it gets it's gone downhill. Big time. more of a winter river. Having said that, I've had roach, dace, minnows and then that chub. I'm just teasing that line down now at the moment. There's just not enough current to pull it off without making the float drag too much. And just bring it up on the inside so it doesn't spook any fish. Shame those trees weren't cut over there because I could really put the float right on the uh, on the fish that's about where I wanted to get because I know there is a bigger chub in there unfortunately Mr Minnow's there as well good fish on good fish on god you actually saw the strike then I did say it's a bigger chub there and this is a much bigger fish I just got that float right. Oh, it's big, big chub, this one. This one's a big one. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh, that's a big chub. That is a big chub. It's me saying the river's not as good as it used to be. This is the sort of fish we used to catch here years ago. 
This is a nice chub. Hoping you're getting some of this. I hope I've pressed the right button. Trying to get you a different angle, trying to get the anglers eye view of him. Here he comes. I can check my watch. I've got about 10 minutes before the uh, ticket man comes down. This is a nice chub. Wow. Wow, yeah, I knew there was a bigger fish in there. Well, I haven't got him yet, have I? He's just pulling. I've got a tiny, that fine wire hook. I'm going to have to just, just ease him in slowly. Just slowly. Just net, 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 net. Wowee. This is a... Oh, he's still going, he's still going, he's still going. That little current there is, he's using it, for sure. Dude's going to try and leave. I don't like pulling fish upstream like this because you tend to pull the hook out of their mouth. And I've got to watch that snag. You see the snag? He knows it's there. Look, 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 look. He knows it's there. Now I'm going to change the angle on him and try and sweep him in my side. Wow, this is, where do you see this one, boys? This is a proper chub. There we go, there we go. I'm going to mess around. Yes, get in. That's over. That's over three pounds, people. Oh, what? You know the saying, there's anglers and there's danglers. I'm just going to show you where he's no right in the edge there. That, folks, is a pristine, nice big chub, probably three and a half pounds. I'm going to try and get you a shot, balancing the camera on my knee. I've never done this shot before. Are you getting the fish? Are you seeing the fish? Lovely big chub. Great big mouth. I knew there was one down. I did see a shape and a black tail. Just let him recover. Wow. And there he goes. You can see him down there. Wow, he's off like a missile straight back over to that drop off over there. And tell all his pals about it. So there you go. Thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. We did get fish out of it in the end. Nice chub, that's a big chub that one, and the first one was okay. Just gives you some tips on how to use a centre pin reel there. I'm no expert, as you know, I just catch fish, that's all I do. I'm not one of those experts, and don't think because you use a centre pin that you're a better angler, because you're not. It's just a different way of fishing. Centre pin I find slightly more restrictive in certain situations, but it's enjoyable to use. It's there, if you want to try it, it's a different technique, it's another one you're going to have to master, and obviously the more you do it, the better you're going to get. Well, you can see here, I don't think I've got time even for me for another cast and after that fish, I'm so lucky and I'm so made up. Don't forget to watch the Totally Awesome Fishing Show, hit that subscribe button, hit my TA Outdoors, hit that subscribe button. Both channels are flying on subscribers. Hopefully you got some tips. We'll see you again in the next show. I actually think that there's a Another fish in there. I couldn't resist the last cast, guys. I've come down below the bush. Got a nice dace. Sorry, roach. There is another fish in there, guys. I can just see something zooming around eating maggots. It's just a bit of a shape. I don't know whether it's a chub a roach or what it is something is chomping on the maggots I can't quite see because the sun's sun's in my eyes there and there is another fish in there I don't think I don't think it's a chub but quite a light colour Just trying to let it go through because it's obviously pretty touchy because this swim's only about six feet long. Ah, oh, pull him straight out. Wow, the size of that one, guys. It came straight out. Look at that in the sunlight, autumn sunlight in the background. That is a really nice day, sir. People, look at that. What a shot. That is what the centre pin's for. I knew there was another fish in there. Back he goes. 
I'm now in the uh, penalty zone for the car park. But it's got to be done, isn't it, guys? It's got to be done. Got to be done. There's about 150 cars in there, so let's hope it doesn't find mine first. I know the luck I normally have. I might just have one run through with a single maggot. Uh, twitchy with the float. That was a fast strike. That nearly came back with a pair of lips. That's why I need it pausing just there. They might, might be minnows because I think I'm only down to a single maggot now. Oh, that was a nice day. I bumped a nice fish. Yet another tangle. I'm on again, another day. Can't stop fishing now. Look at the size of these days and look at that. Look at that backdrop up there, that beautiful gold. That is fantastic. I'm turning into a good little session. There is a light coloured fish down there, zooming around. He's not as big as a chub. I don't know what it is. I couldn't put that leaf on there if I wanted to. There he is, I've seen him now. Every time I throw a bunch in, he's in there taking them. Big, big dace on this time, people. That's almost, no, it's a nice roach. A nice roach. Really gonna have to go now, but what a great roach to finish with. Full palm size, that's a spanker, that one. <laughs> 